Hello everyone and welcome. Today we are going to be looking at the interior view of Halo vehicles. We're mainly going to be focusing on Halo 5 Guardians, but we're also going to be looking at other Halo games. The simple technique we are going to use is something anyone can do in theater mode. You don't need to be doing any kind of modding or anything like that. You could do it from your Xbox. And when you go into theater mode, you want to get in the way of, let's say, a Wraith, for example. Pausing the video and then resuming the video as your camera is in the way of the Wraith will make the camera clip through the Wraith model or any other vehicle model that you are trying to get a good interior view of. Some of you may have unintentionally have done this before in theater mode, but I wanted to make a video looking at all the details that us players, we don't get to see because when we use a vehicle in the Halo franchise, we are stuck in third person mode. The reason why you're able to see through the Wraith when the camera is stuck inside the Wraith model itself is because that's what's called culling. That's how 343 Industries saved on memory instead of generating an entire interior. They only generated here the driver's seat of the vehicle. It doesn't look like it actually has a steering wheel. It has two big pistons and hydraulics on the side. I mean, look at all this detail. That is just awesome to see. All these tubes and everything with plasma generating through it. Really, really neat. I wouldn't really say the driver's seat is all that comfortable and the gunner position is a, essentially a long tube. There's not even a little platform to put your lunch or an MRE or anything, <laughs> but it's really neat to see the interior of a Wraith. Moving right along here, we're going to be looking at the interior of a Mantis. And look at this. It looks like it would be really cold if you took this out into the snow because there's just metal all over. There's well, not really much to it. There's not even a cup holder or anything like that, but you have a nice little cozy area, I guess. Just don't go into cold weather with this thing. <laughs> There's a little bit of detail in that on the sides, but really not much to it. What I really find interesting is when you go into theater mode and you press the B button to access the player model outline, you see that your player goes inside the Mantis, the model stays in there for the time being, and right when you take the first step, your player model disappears. Even if you tried to get the camera back inside the Mantis, you can see that your player model isn't there. Spooky. The same can be said for the Scorpion tanks as well. I was driving this Oni Scorpion tank, and you cannot see my player model in the driver's seat. I believe there is something interesting to this, why you cannot see the player model, but I'll get back to that just a little bit later. Let's look at the interior of the Scorpion tank altogether. So you can see that there's again quite a bit of calling going on here. There was no reason for 343 Industries to put any more detail inside that we the players cannot see. But the dash looks very much the same as what we saw in the Mantis and the chair looks rather comfortable. Looks like a good old grandpa's chair. <laughs> but I cannot see any cup holder. That is a big deal for me. I really like a vehicle with a cup holder, but that's okay. You do have a giant gun on top, so that's pretty neat. Other than that, it looks like a metal box, essentially. But very protective. Especially if you're an Oni tank. Now, this is a nice little detail I love. I just needed to point this out in this video. If you look at the tank shell, you could see UNSC ordinates on this. Oh my gosh, that is awesome. I don't know why, I just find that so neat. But what I really find even more spectacular is that the developers went ahead and put in the detail of the primer having that little indentation there. That little indentation is from the firing pin. That is a nice little bit of detail there. Now you can see one of my teammates gets inside the gunner position of my Oni Scorpion tank and I needed to show you guys that when you get the camera inside the tank itself and if you have a gunner, you can see the player model from the gunner, their feet, they're standing on this platform that looks like it's stabilizing them. It's really cool. You can see the right leg has some padding there and the left leg is more so pressed up against this platform that's a decline or incline, however you want to look at it. And I believe that's just some detail that we would never be able to see based off of the third person view that we have whenever we're inside the tank. Really neat stuff. This still doesn't look like a place to put your coffee though. The same camera clipping technique can be used in Halo 3 theater mode. 
if you just put your camera in front of a rolling scorpion you can see through it but you can see that there is no player model in the driver's seat instead you have two big control sticks looks kind of like a pain to operate but there you go in Halo 2 Anniversary, you can see your player model through the window of the Scorpion tank. Now, because you can see your player model, if you go inside the Scorpion tank itself, there you go. There's your player model having a good old time in the Scorpion tank. Many of you already know that you can snipe the driver of a Scorpion tank in Halo 2 Anniversary multiplayer. Unfortunately, in the Halo Master Chief Collection, even after the update, I have still yet to play with Scorpion tanks on Bloodline for Big Team Battle. I really hope they put it in because these Scorpion tanks are so much fun to use in Halo 2 Anniversary. In Halo Reach, the Scorpion tank models are similar to the Scorpion tank models found in Halo 2 Anniversary, minus the way you operate the machine gun. But in Halo Reach, you can see the player model inside the driver's seat of the Scorpion tank and you can snipe them or you can wave at them. Here is what the driver sees of the Scorpion tank in Halo Reach. Wow, look at that, nice. And let's just pretend there are pedals down there that your Spartan is pressing on. And it looks like your Spartan models are as happy as a clam. I mean, I would be too if I was operating a Scorpion tank in the battlefield of the Halo world. The point that I'm getting at here is that in Halo 5 Guardians, you cannot see the player model through a window of the Scorpion tank. So there was no reason for 343 Industries to generate a player model. However, things get a little bit interesting in Halo 4. You see in Halo 4, the Scorpion tank canopy has windows on it as if you could see through them, but you cannot see through those windows. However, there's the player model still inside. Now I think this was based off of the designer's choice. Perhaps 343 Industries when they were making the Scorpion tank in Halo 4, the way Halo 4 looked entirely, they wanted to have this dark green window tint on the window itself instead of having it transparent. Halo 4 seems to be one of those games that caters more towards the general first person shooter population. Weapons such as the sniper rifle are very easy to use in Halo 4, so if they had the Scorpion tank canopy transparent, well, it may have just made it too easy to snipe the Scorpion tank driver. Therefore, they made the windows non-transparent and harder to shoot the driver out. Before we move on to other vehicles, let me show you how I get rid of an enemy wraith. I throw them way up into the air made it much easier to go about this firefight round instead of having that pesky wraith. Ward, ward, ward. He probably landed on a house. Now looking at the banshees, the banshees I think are awesome. Oh my god, look at this. Despite how powerful the Banshees can be, they don't look very comfortable when you have to lay down in them. Looks like the canopy is going to shut down on you and your arms are going to be coming out of there, maybe your face, just like this Elite. <laughs> but what I find really cool about Halo 5 Guardians Banshees is that when you play against any kind of NPCs that are in the Banshee, the model, the player model of the Elites are already in there. They're not just spawned right when you destroy them. They are actually flying around inside the Banshees. Now here's a teammate of mine that got into a Banshee and you can see the player model outline. I think it's pretty cool because this shows, puts it into perspective of how large the Banshee truly is to that of a Spartan. I knew that the Banshees were large, but man, it really makes it look like you are really inside something that is up armored and flying around and can be very powerful. It just looks very uncomfortable to lay in. But other than that, I'd go ahead and take one for my garage. The Wasp was a vehicle I was really looking forward to looking at the interior for this video. I know what a lot of you are probably thinking. Why don't you just wait for the windshield to be busted out and then 
taken the camera to look at the interior from there instead of trying to get the camera inside the actual cockpit of the aircraft with a windshield. But where's the fun in that? I need the windshield intact to make it feel like you are truly inside the vehicle now. <laughs> so you can see here all the different buttons that 343 Industries inputted into this, the designers, the art directors, the ones that were building the vehicles. I mean, they went in depth with the interior look, but I do have to question, why do you put your feet on a monitor? I mean, that doesn't look comfortable. Surely you have to put your feet somewhere. I don't want to be stepping on that monitor. If I was flying this, I wouldn't want to put my feet there on that monitor. That thing looks expensive. I thought that there would be a section where the feet can tuck into, but I guess not. And I love how the windshield is transparent. Look at that. Oh yeah, that's a good effect. <laughs> and you see the chassis with the metal bars. That's really cool. Makes it feel like it's put together, the whole cockpit. And this thruster gear shift, that is cool. I like that, especially the way the Spartan player model is gripping onto it. It looks like maybe a little vent there for air conditioning or a speaker of some sort, I don't know. But this is a nice effect. When you get inside the interior view of this Wasp when you are getting shot at, you see that the energy shield effect is even shown in the interior view of the Wasp. Now, it would freak me out if I saw this effect going on in my car, but it doesn't look like our Spartan is phased by it and his Wasp. This was one of the few best angles I can get of that controller stick there. That's pretty neat to see the Spartan player model holding on to that. And in between the Spartan's legs, you can see some type of handle either for ejecting or maybe to store your candy bars. I'm not too sure, but it sure is a nice little addition to the vehicle model. Just to let you guys know, if you try to do this technique here in theater mode, the camera's going to act a little wonky. It's not necessarily going to act the way you want it to, so I tried to get the best shots possible. Here you can see the windshield actually busted out, but the whole point to this video was showing you the view from vehicles that you cannot see inside of because of something enclosing it. But to give the Warthog the respect that it deserves, what do you guys think about this? In Halo Combat Evolved, when you got into the passenger seat of the Warthog, your view would remain in first person. While it can be a major disadvantage for the driver to remain in first person view, I do like the inherent crazy chaotic perspective that you can get as a passenger inside the Warthog on Halo Combat Evolved. It is tempting, however, to imagine what the next Halo will be like if we were able to have an option where we can see from a first person perspective of us driving around in a Warthog while people are shooting each other and blowing up stuff. It's really interesting to think about, especially when we have games like Forza Horizon 4, where you drive around as the Master Chief and a Warthog in a very detailed oriented first person view. You can go into third person view if you want as well, but the interior view of this Warthog in Forza Horizon 4 is so awesome. It's gorgeous too. Seeing all of the interior lights for the Warthog on the dash and just thinking about what other Halo vehicles would look like in first person view really makes you wonder if we will see something like this in the next Halo games. Perhaps I could have just picked up a sniper rifle and zoomed in by standing on top of a scorpion tank or a wraith or whatnot and seeing the interior view, but detaching the camera in theater mode and clipping through the vehicle model itself, to me, was a lot more fun. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a like and go ahead and subscribe to this channel, Beelzebub's Buns. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.